This is Ashley Roan from Paradigm English and Living in English. Today, we will be talking about a career change for teachers. Now, as many of you know, I am an English teacher, and more specifically, I teach English to speakers of other languages, or English as a foreign language, or English as a second language. Now, what that really means is that I'm teaching English to people whose first language is not English. Teaching is extremely difficult. Not only is it difficult, but it's one of the most underpaid professions across the globe. No more so than in the United States. Yes, I know. People think America is a place of honey and milk and glitter and gold. And though we do have all of that, we also have very major and deep problems in our country. And, of course, in our states and cities and our students, more importantly, our youth, our children here, they're the ones that suffer. So I kind of want to look at what the issue is surrounding this, you know, what, what, why there is this issue, and some things that we can do. And more importantly, why are teachers leaving the profession? And if you're one of those teachers, what are your options? How do you know which skills to use? Which skills do you have? Do you know where to turn? We'll be answering all of those questions in just a bit. So most importantly, let's look at this from a lens of what's the issue. Now, if you have been looking at all the news for the past probably about six months now, especially if you're in the United States or you follow news in the United States, you would have heard a lot about teacher walkouts. What is that? And why are teachers walking out? So I am from a state and I live and work in a state in which teachers are one, if not the lowest paid um, professions. I mean, and teachers in general across the United States, pay wise, their salary is the lowest. They haven't received a raise in at least 10 years, at least. 10 years. Now, I'm not saying they haven't received even like a quarter or a penny. They've received none. Um, and seeing as they make maybe 30 something thousand dollars or perhaps 40,000, it doesn't negate or it doesn't even equate to the salary that one could make if they live just south of us, two and a half hours, three hours south of Oklahoma City, which is the capital of Oklahoma, where teachers in Texas um, they make starting off starting pay with limited experience $50,000. Now the cost of living in Texas compared to Oklahoma is slightly more expensive and obviously if you live in a much larger city like Dallas or Houston or Austin it is more expensive than Oklahoma City or Tulsa or Norman the three largest cities in Oklahoma but salary disparity there is, is rather large. That's one thing low and stagnant pay. Many teachers across the globe, I'm going to argue here, not just in the United States, have large, uh, overcrowded classrooms. So if you're trying to teach English as a second language to children whose language, their first language is not English, they're already struggling uh, with the language, they maybe don't know the culture of studying at that school or in this culture, now it's a large, overcrowded, perhaps 20-something students there. They're not getting into individualized attention. And more importantly, the classes are crowded. Teachers can't help a student like they would like to. And the students really suffer for that. I think another issue is that the teaching profession in general is not seen as a professional career. They're not really seen as professionals. Many people think that their job is easy. Uh, they go to school and teach for a short amount of time, for example, from maybe 7 in the morning when classes begin or 8 o'clock in the morning. Well, actually, it depends which grade they're in. So some classes will begin at 7.40, uh, 7.50, and students will be out by about 2.50, uh, almost uh, 3 o'clock, especially if they're like in high school. At least that's how it was when I was in high school in my district that I grew up in. Or some students will go to school at around 8 something, almost 9 o'clock, and they'll be finished by 3 something. Now, people think that their day is short and that they uh, aren't working very much and um, that they see them as having all summers off. In the district that I grew up in way back in the day, our classes ended in May and they started in mid-August and they ended at the end of May, I should say. So people think, oh, teachers have this whole summer off. Well, teachers don't get paid during the summer. 
And whenever we go into student or classrooms here in the United States, teachers really put a lot of effort into making their room a very educational environment. So they put up lots of pictures and posters and colored papers and um, you know different things that are in their classrooms. No school pays for that. That comes directly out of the teacher's own pocket. That comes out of their salary, which they're already not getting paid a lot of. Now there is a tax incentive here of about two hundred dollars, but I have I have no knowledge of any teacher in the United States that spends only two hundred dollars on materials, papers, and pencils, for example, um, printing paper, construction paper, color pencils, and and crayons. I I don't know any teacher that spends two hundred dollars only. It, it doesn't exist. I myself have spent closer to a thousand this year alone. And I don't teach children, I teach adults. Another issue, and this has been argued, is that because teaching is a predominantly female uh, industry and profession, that many people, more or less men is what they're arguing here, don't see it as a viable career. It's something fluffy, it's something, uh, it's something that's really easy. It's not. Teaching doesn't only happen in the classroom. Teaching happens, it does happen in the classroom, but to prep for that takes a considerable amount of time and research. Teachers have to know where they're going and how they're going to get there and get the materials that they need. And the other issue is that if you work in a school or school district that has been cutting funds, your books are outdated, your chairs are broken, your desks are broken, perhaps your air conditioning or heat, it's finicky, it's broken. So you have all of these things that are working against you and you're trying to supplement it as best you can and that's where Teachers Paying Teachers comes in. That's where that comes in. And also, most teachers are working more than one job. Minimum of two, but I've heard of max of at least three or four. If teachers are working that many jobs, they're tired at the end of the day, they're stressed throughout the day and even when going to sleep and they need to still prepare their students when they know for sure that they don't have what they need to do their job. Can you imagine going into a hospital and them saying, oh, we don't actually have that prescription that you need, that you vitally need to survive. What do you do? That's a pretty dramatic example, but think about that. If a doctor or a nurse or um, an optometrist or an audiologist, speech pathologist, any of these folks, if they didn't have what they needed to do their job properly, how would your health be affected? How would you be affected? It's a good question. Now, you can also look at it from the lens of there's a lack of administrative support. That speaks for itself. <laughs> if somebody's not supporting you and that's their job to support you, that's pretty difficult uh, as a teacher to get things done. Now, we already talked a bit about the lack of educational funding and that feeds into the lack of administrative support oftentimes, but nonetheless, it's important to reiterate lack of educational fundings in cities and states. Also, results in teacher burnout. Teachers are leaving the profession and there are not more teachers coming in. Many teachers leave within their first three years of graduating from an educational program. First three years. Years. They don't make it past that because of all of the things that have been just listed. And it's not necessarily that they haven't been adequately trained. Sometimes it is that. We do need more diversity training. We do need uh, diversity in teaching staff and teachers in general. That feeds into it when you have a diverse population of students. That can feed into some of this. And a lot of times students come in with different issues. Perhaps they um, are living in severe poverty. Um, they're in abusive households. Somebody is abusing them. And this all feeds into the fact that they are not being adequately educated. And teachers also have to deal with that. So they have a bit of counseling involved in that. These are all reasons why teachers are leaving. This concludes part one of our program. We thank you for listening and ask that you visit us at www.paradigmenglish.com. Please subscribe to us on iTunes, Stitcher, or Spotify. Please visit us on our Facebook page at Paradigm English. Bye-bye for now.